Move, let's go! Move, 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 move! The teams must fight for possession of the tyre. To score, they must drive it across the opposing team's goal line. This is where it really fucking counts now. All over to you now. This task is a chance for number four, Sean, and number three, Justine, the youngest recruit on the course, to display their leadership skills to the DS. I was in Army Cadets for five years, in which you're really forced into leadership roles. Get this fucking tire over there, line. As a child, I was always like the, the badass. <laughs> but being the youngest recruit is, it's, it's definitely scary, so. Get in there now! Good, good, good! Excellent, keep going! Number nine, one back. Great communication, great teamwork. Sean's team win the first round. Number three, get a grip of your team. Otherwise, I'll come over there and get a fucking grip of you. Do you understand? Yes, sir. I think my greatest weakness is actually showing weakness. Number three, number 18. I don't know where that comes from, but I've always hated showing any form of vulnerability. Three. I'd say that was her weakest performance to date. She fell off the fucking pedestal big time. She wasn't in the game this morning. She was just, yeah. boom, she wasn't even switching on to no it. Paying no attention. Paying no attention. I thought that extra responsibility as well on top. It's just fucking the pressure. Kind of imploding. <sighs> Listen, she's only young, but that's what selection is all about. And, you know, you imagine that on the battlefield, having a brain fart like that, you know, it's going to cost lives. Number three, in my eyes, is that close. Mm. And um, she's gone. God, I'm gonna get the shit. I've had two things of coffee. That's strange, isn't it? Do you not? No, no. Oh, lucky. Because some people can't deal with protein powder, can they? <laughs> oh my god, and protein farts are like a different. My, my new body level must be of... immune to it because I've got. Really? Yeah. Number three, let's go. Pass your best tins to number 18. After a display of poor leadership on the task, the DS want to find out if number three, Justin, has the potential to take control of her emotions and her team. Yes, sir. I think that's one of the hardest times I've pushed myself. I'll be honest, you know, between us speaking to each other and the DS, you're out the front physically, mm -hmm. but mentally, there was a lack of confidence in your leadership ability. How do you feel about leadership and stepping up? Even though I'm quite quiet, when I, mm, I do try my best to step up to leadership roles. Unfortunately, it's not getting any easier. And that's why we put you under pressure today. But you were pretty disappointing. Why did you come on here? What, what did you want to achieve for you personally? Because I really want to join the military. I want to join the army. I thought this would be a good test. I've got good discipline. I've always had it ever since I was a child. Which part of being a child? Well, my parents are quite high achievers, so I've always felt the need to really, really impress them. My mum went to the Bolshoi Ballet School. Wow. And Dad is a very entrepreneurial man. And I've always felt like a massive disappointment, so... Your parents are quite strict. My mum used to be very strict. Um, we lived in Italy. I was brought up in Italy. Then at 13, my mum passed away. And then um, that same year, we moved to Cornwall. That was a... Massive change, obviously. 
for me, losing my mum at 11, I wasn't very emotional. I repressed everything, didn't deal with that emotion. And I see that look in your eyes. It's a, it reminds me of myself when I was your age. I did the same thing, and I think I've always had that gap. That's why I joined cadets, because I wanted to feel like I belonged to something. That's also why I kind of want to join the military. I just want to, I want to be like you guys. I want to feel like I'm, a, you know, part of a family. You have got the capacity to do this. We've asked you to step up as a team leader. That will continue. But there's times when you've just got to be confident in your own abilities. Because you, as an individual, you're fucking there. Mm -hmm. It's now about leadership. We want to see you at the end. Yeah. Thank you, sir. God. My mum was diagnosed with breast cancer when I was around 10, but she passed away when I was 13. Keep doing what you're doing, number three. Stand by. Go. I didn't cry at the funeral. I literally held it in the whole day because I was just trying to get my head around the fact that I would never see her again and, you know, that was it. We didn't really talk about my mum's death at all. That's how we coped with it. We just, yeah, put a lid on it and just, that's it. Number four! Having exhausted them physically, the DS will now apply mental pressure by seeing how the recruits react to potential contact with their loved ones. Strength is important in the special forces. But just because you're strong physically doesn't mean you're strong mentally. No one really knows their true strength until they've been tested. As a special forces operator, your emotions are definitely heightened. You have to know when to bring them to the forefront and you have to know when to control them. Because if you have any distractions whatsoever, you won't make it through. Thought process. Well, look, look, she, look, but look she's computing what's going on. I'm quite good at like focusing on one thing and putting everything else to one side if that's what needs to be done. You just keep going and not let any of the other things get in the way. Because the minute you do, that's when the that's when you lose control. Beyond her years. She is beyond her years. She is going to make an awesome soldier.